Today we're going to ask one question. Will it cut? Now I have a lot of multi tools on the table. I also have an entire series of Leatherman tools dating back to the very beginning of the PST. We're going to test them all against the coat hanger, which yesterday shattered these replaceable cutters from Leatherman. Now, here's what's interesting, and I'll just say this right now before we get to the video. This is not an arc problem. This is a cutter problem. In fact, one of the tools on this table also have this same cutter design. And we're gonna see if those also fail during this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So a couple of things I wanna clarify from the last video. I've seen a lot of comments and maybe a lot of overreactions. First and foremost, this is not an issue with the Leatherman Arc. It's an issue specifically with the cutters that are included with it. Now, if you can see here, they are rounded at the bottom, which is an indication of these next generation cutters. Now, it's not simply that this is the case and it creates a gap. It may also be that these are heat treated in a different way because I barely put any pressure on it to cause the cracking that you're seeing right there. And I've never in my entire existence using multi-tools had this happen. In fact, I have been carrying a multi-tool since 1998 with actually the tool I will show in here. The next year I got the Ludman Wave and I carried that for over a decade. I never had an issue and I have cut things far <laughs> worse than this. In fact, I've cut nails. And that was something that Tim Leatherman used to do and demonstrate. He used to show how his multi-tools would cut, I think it was a 10-penny nail. I can't remember which one it was. But I will tell you that he used to use that as a demonstration to show just how high quality his tools actually were. So the fact that it can't even cut a coat hanger, which is softer, by the way, is not as tough as a nail by any stretch of the imagination, is a really big deal. Deal. Now, I have seen in my comments of that last video that people have been finding it not just on the Arc, but on the Leatherman Surge, on the Leatherman Wave, on the Rebar, on any tool that seems to be between sometime in 2022 leading up to now. In fact, one person mentioned that one of the cutters was straight, like the old style, and one was this new design. So with that background, we're gonna kind of start with, well, we've, you've seen what happened with the Arc. Let's start with the older Leatherman tools. And we're gonna go, go from the very beginning. And this is my kind of collection of older Leatherman tools and is one of my favorite things in the whole world. So we have the PST right here. We're gonna start with the PST. We're then also going to include the mini tool. So most people don't know this came right after. Very, very awesome little tool. We're gonna do the Super Tool Original. We're gonna do the Leatherman Wave. Let's see, we also have a Juice. We're gonna do a Juice S2, an original Juice S2. Let Mr. Uh, crunch, now this is a new one. Maybe we'll skip this crunch just because I know it'll cut. We'll go to the Fuse. And that's kind of where we're gonna end it. Uh, and then we'll work on some other brands as well. And we're gonna then finish up with the Leatherman Rebar, which, as you will see, I bought recently, this is the knifeless rebar, and it has that same gap. See that right there? The same rounded cutters. We'll see how this does as well. This will be what we'll finish with, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so beginning with the PST, I have no question in my mind that this will absolutely cut without any issue, and we'll do five cuts. No problem. And check it out, this is a brand new, like really high, like polish PST. I got one that was really good condition. You can see there's absolutely no marring, no issues whatsoever. This is an old style. I'm trying to remember the exact date codes for this one. Let me, let me pull this out. This is 2000, I think. Yeah, so December of, of zero, 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 or it's December of 2000. So it's a relatively old, old uh, multi-tool, 23 years of this one. So we have the mini tool. If you've never seen this thing, it's one of the most amazing little pieces of engineering. You flip out these handles. It has tools stored in the side, can opener, bot opener. We're all gonna use this as a chance to take a look at some history as well. So amazing, and it even has comfortable handles because of that. Let's take a look at this one. One, two, three, four, five. Zero issues whatsoever, no problem. 
I think you're getting the point here. And I, I could go through the whole gambit, and I guarantee there will be no failures. I have never seen one fail, in fact. Leatherman Wave. Oh, I skipped the, the uh, um, Super Tool, but we'll go back. Same plier, by the way, same plier head as the updated version of the PST. So we'll definitely uh, have the same performance, basically. Super Tool, one of my favorite tools maybe ever made, the original, for sure. Third one that they've ever come out with. There we go. Five cuts, very easy, no problem, absolutely no issues for the Super Tool. All right, and here's the thing. The Leatherman Juice, the S2 specifically, was one of those special tools. Very, very compact, very, very light, and a much, much smaller plier head. Check it out. Really small and narrow, but notice, still has a hard wire cutter. So let's give it a shot. Let's see how it does, huh? That's a little smaller handle. Three, four, five. Absolutely no issues whatsoever, as you can see. Really great design. I wish they would bring back something in this form factor, by the way. Just really, really awesome. Okay. That's some of the older Leathermans. Now let's talk about some of the other tools that are on the market, some different ones. People were asking, why not check out some of these other tools? Let's start with the GOAT tool, and I did, have never tried it on hard wire cutters. Now, the interesting thing about the GOAT tool is that there is not a lot of relief edge. You can see there's not a lot of space behind it. So with hard wire, it doesn't cause that much of an issue, but I'll tell you right now that the um, that with soft wire, it just tends to crush it a little bit. So we definitely need to come back around to the GOAT tool. But when it comes to hard wire, absolutely no issues with the hard wire cutters. Like it's, it's easy enough and there's no damage whatsoever to those cutters either. We're good. There's one. Fun tool I'll bring out one more time. So I modified this from a past uh, Blackfire tool into a diagonal cutter multi-tool. I had a lot of fun doing it. So these don't have a dedicated slot for hard wire but I want to illustrate that if it's heat treated properly, this type of wire is absolutely no issues for it whatsoever, right? Just no issues, no issues whatsoever. See what I mean? So it, it has to do in part with the heat treatment. Okay, what else? Uh, let's go to a Swiss tool. Absolutely incredible quality on this one. And once again, I can guarantee we don't have any issues with this thing, but here, we'll, we'll show you because it's worth demonstrating. Now, I think the cutters on the Swiss tools in general are worse than the Leathermans. They just, they're just, they don't cut other types of wire particularly well, but hard wire, absolutely no problem. And why does this matter? Why does this matter? I know people who have depended on Leathermans to cut up fencing as they go through. And I'm serious, the fencing metal is much harder and much thicker and they don't have a problem going through it and have done so for years without any failure to cutters whatsoever. So this is a big drop down in capability if it's not able to complete these, this basic task. And if it's across the board to all of the Leatherman tools, right now it's possible that something like the Curl or the Rev or something along those lines, something with that, or, or the Bond have a better plier head because the benefit of the replaceable cutters is to be able to fix it if, if there's like an indentation or a roll, which you can't do as easily with the older style, right? That's the whole benefit. But you give up on strength. So if you're not gonna get good cutting quality, you may as well just go with a style of plier that is going to give you more strength, right? It just makes more sense. Uh, we have a bunch of others on the table. I mean, let's take a look at the $30 Gerber NXT. How does that perform? And this also has hard wire cutters. Now, what's weird about this one is it doesn't like really like close all the way. You can see there's a bit of a gap there, but like it'll definitely like bend it off, right? It's not, it's not perfect, but it does work, right? I, I wouldn't say this is my favorite version of the hard wire cutter. Similar to that, the Rev. Now the Rev has actual hard wire cutters, and these are actually one of the reasons why I think they need a one-handed version of the Rev. I actually do like this plier head. What am I doing? I'm gonna need to uh, cut this uh, cut this up. Oh, man, I'm struggling with this Rev. 
get in there. Holy crap. Okay, is that is that just the plier or is that the rev? I'm, I'm, I'm the cutters, I mean. Oh, okay, it's just the rev. The rev sucks. Okay, there's that. It, it can cut it, but for some reason these are... Oh, look at how thick. You see how thick the, uh, the edge is there? Maybe. Maybe this has something to do with it. Either way, I couldn't get a lot of leverage. The rev actually did a worse job than the S2, which is surprising to me. I actually thought it would be better than that. We're learning something new. Okay, so another tool that matters in the comparison. There are tons of clones out there. We've talked about a lot of clones on this channel. And uh, they have their own version of cutters. In fact, uh, what's interesting is this particular one has two different types of cutters. One for hardwire and one for not. And let's, let's take a look and see how this does. Is this going to fail on me? I like I'm shooting it across the room here. Zero issues. I think. Oh no, that's just coloration. But yeah, no issues whatsoever with that. Just a little polishing. And that's kind of the, the issue here. If one of the biggest strengths of Leatherman is that the pliers were better, but if the cutters are a problem and they perform under everything else, well, that's going to become problematic. And look, there are a bunch of other tools here. We'll just, we'll do one more. This is the Havilon, which I recently just talked about. Has a hard wire notch as well. And it's not the most ergonomic, but it definitely does cut. Yeah, not the most ergonomic, but will it work? Definitely. Once again, no damage. Okay, we're going to finish it up on that one. We're going to go to the Leatherman rebar, which has the same cutters, and see what happens here. It's just kind of building up to this here. It may not break. Get in there. So here we go. So we got it all the way down. What the hell? Okay, so the pro part of the problem is that slot prevents it from actually working in the first place. So that, that's the first problem. So bent, not broken. Now, now let's say I go a little bit higher. Obviously, if I, if I purposely set it up there, I can cut it. The problem is that's not how anybody cuts wires. Have you ever seen an electrician or anybody who's doing work take their time and go, okay, let me, let me, let me line it up. Let me just, let me just get it right, right there. No, you never see that. That never happens, right? I have had a Leatherman for years. I have never really like, uh, like stick it in there, cut it, right? That, that's basically what I've done. I'm sure I've used the hard wire cutters for most cutting without even realizing it because I just, I'm just throwing the wire in there, right? I'm doing it quickly, usually, as are most people. And if, the perp if doing that could potentially crack the cutters, that's a problem. Now, the good news here is that it didn't break the cutters. Now, they don't work particularly well because of that gap, but it didn't crack them, so that's great. That's a good thing, right? But, but the simple fact is you saw, as you saw here, if you were to go with any of the Leatherman tools that don't have, oh, hold on, let me go get the bond, right? If you were to go with any Leatherman tool that does not have replaceable cutters, like the Leatherman bond, look, this is a, a perfectly usable plier set and it's not going to have any issues. I literally don't have to worry about it. Boom, right? It's going to cut. Now, these, these actually are brand new and I need to grease them up a little bit to make them a little bit smoother. But you notice no issues with these pliers whatsoever. And these are currently available. So as of right now, the included cutters, the, the one piece design, have better cutters than the ones with the replaceable. Even if they don't crack, they don't cut properly. That's my problem. And I don't think it's understated to say that this is a major issue for Leatherman. This is the first time I've ever seen Leatherman take second fiddle to anyone when it comes to the cutters. That includes Victorinox. I think that the Victorinox cutters 
are not particularly good. Oh, where is it? I can't even find it. Yeah, uh, the like the Victorinox cutters with the way they have it set up with multiple sections, it cuts soft wire really badly, okay? It cuts hard wire no problem, and it's never going to break, but it doesn't cut the wire very cleanly. And the same thing is true with the Super Tool. They just don't cut very clean. So they let them and always had a one-up on that. And when it came to Gerber, especially with their replaceable carbide cutters, which tend to crack, this had the similar problem, but it can easily tackle the, the coke hanger wire without, without an issue, as it should. Like, I, I have never had an issue with this, with this, with this kind of system, ever. Now I get it. Now the, the only problem with the Gerber is it does have that that spot a little bit higher up, so you do have to locate it. But and I've never liked them. To be fair, I, I I've never been a huge fan of these. But even right now, the Gerber cutters are beating the the new new design. And I want to also say one last thing, and then I'm going to let everyone go. I know this was a long video, maybe a little ranting happened. There's a good chance that the engineers never saw these cutters. To their credit, there's a chance that they designed it and everything with the original cutters, they walked around with it, they did all that stuff, and then later production happened, they changed the producer or changed the design, added it to the arc, and it's possible that they never had a chance to actually test these. That's possible. I don't think that reflects well, but the inevitable fact is if they don't fix this problem, we can no longer say they have the best cutters. In fact, we can't even say that there's an advantage to getting the Leatherman replaceable cutters when other brands can do it better. That's a big problem, and they have to figure that out. From a competition standpoint, this is one of the big considerations of why you would want to carry a plier-based multi-tool in the first place. So if you're going to do it, you may as well get one that is, or sorry, may as well get one that is, uh, you know, included and doesn't have replaceable cutters. It's going to be stronger because there's no cutout, and uh, you're also going to have a better hardware cutter. That's a really big issue for Leatherman right now. It's possible that the cutters on the curl are better than the Leatherman Wave at a lower price. You get where I'm saying with all of this? I hope it's making some sense why it's a big deal and why I'm making a big deal about it. All right, that's it for today. Um, I hope this kind of clarified a couple of things. We went through and take a look at some of my favorite tools ever made. The, the mini tool, which is, oh my God, I love this thing. The, the Le original Leatherman Wave, my companion for over a decade. The PST, um, the super tool, another incredible design. But the question still remains, can it cut? And uh, the answer is no. I would say no. The, the new cutters do not do a good job, at the very least, in the hard wire section. And from what people have told me, it has created incomplete cuts on things when people slot it in to make cuts. That has, that's a big problem and they have to fix it immediately. As always guys, thank you so much for your time. We'll talk again soon.